As you can tell from the title of this video, we're going to be ripping off a style from iDubs. In this video, we're going to be addressing certain things about a particular content creator. Now, this creator was brought to my attention by a patron about two years ago, maybe, maybe less? Doesn't matter. Now, this particular patron binge watches, hate watches this creator. And she does it, I think, because it keeps her honest. And after spending a couple of days watching this person's channel, I could certainly see why she hate watches. Now, to be clear, and this is to you, Amberlyn Reed, me critiquing your content, me critiquing you as a person because of what you put in your videos on your Twitter and on your you now, does not make me a <clears throat> hater. It makes me somebody with principles that think some of the lies you've been passing off need to be called out. I just want to become a better person now. Several days later. Uh, yesterday I weighed in at 503.2, and today I weighed in at 499.6. Now you may not like it that it's been done by some snooty Brit, a Cthulhu kin no less, but I haven't seen many videos done on you. Maybe some people just enjoy watching you stuff your face. Those muck bangs? Is that what they're called? Because I have to eat to survive. Why the fuck you lying? Yes. I think Repsion does it better with cereal, but to each their own. In any case, we're going to be covering four topics around the channel of Amberlynn Reed. They include dieting. No, not fat shaming, although we'll get to that later. Irony appears to be lost on her. Relationships. Destiny fucked me up. Like, everything I did for her, she is the best girlfriend I ever had. And I fucked it up. Animal care and mental health. Because there are lies in all of those, and I firmly believe that each and every one of them needs to be addressed. So let's start with dieting. There she blows! So to start, we should first learn a little about Amberlynn Reed. She started in November 2013, where she chronicled her weight loss journey and subsequent quitting because she hurt herself doing squats incorrectly. Okay, so I can tell you one thing. When I do these squats now, the front of my thighs hurt bad. That is because you are not doing them correctly. On the screen is how you should be doing them. While we don't get to see you do them, I can be almost certain you are not doing them correctly. More so because of the following. I had a bulged disc, and he said the two were very similar in the way of symptoms, and that he was going to subscribe me to medicine. If the medicine helped, then that's exactly what it was. So... Knowing me, I don't take prescription medication at all. I never have besides an anti, um, what is it called? <sighs> Antibiotic, that's what it's called, sorry. Because of my past and my parents, I am afraid to take prescription drugs. But I knew I had to, so I took it and <sighs> little did I know that Every day I started feeling better and better, so. So this is a completely different Amy's TV dinner that I talked about before. This one has vegetables, rice, dal, I have no idea. But it's pretty much just organic vegetables and rice and OMG. He leads the majority of our audience to believe that she is utterly incapable of losing weight for any prolonged period of time. This is further proven by her remarkably weak excuses, which usually center around her knowing she did wrong, but her still binging four times in a day or a week anyway. Welcome to our eight weigh-ins in one video. I'm doing this because I had a really, really bad week. Yeah, me too. I binged uh, this last week probably four times. Um, I overate every single day. And I know exactly why I did it. I have no excuses. Another set of excuses, coupled with lies that Amberlynn likes to feed our audience, circle around her supposed fear of doctors. 
even though she has been to see them or the ER doctors essentially on numerous occasions in the last five years for her various health issues, more recently because of her fears of the Beatus, all the while showing her <clears throat> emails claiming that she is healthy. She talks about her skin pigmentation and fobs it off as a condition and not the more likely jaundice, which would be a side effect of those gallstones you talked about in a recent video. I suffer from gallstones and I was having really, really bad sharp cramps and just horrible sharp pains in my upper abdomen area. I was worried that my gallbladder was infected, which is actually something you really need to get taken care of if that's the case. Gallstones, for those that don't know, are formed by cholesterol and bile and are prevalent in obese people and women. These usually don't bother most people, but when they do, there is realistically only one option, not the herbal remedies, an option which you will never take, and your diet does not help you in any way. In fact, it would exacerbate the symptoms. Now to quickly address the comment she makes about taking offense to being accused of having the beatus because it runs in the family. Amberlynn has the beatus. That's very offensive because it runs on my family. Diabetes is an inherited condition. This is you at 360 pounds and this is you now. I know low income folk that look better than you and they are in their 60s. That said, you don't help yourself by doing silly little things like going to bed with your makeup on. And I did sleep on my makeup so I do apologize for that. You've been talking about stopping that for years. But I see like you're dieting you can't seem to shake this habit. Which brings us handily onto a piece of poetry that you wrote in 2015. Now before anyone accuses me or jumps on me for shaming her, I am not shaming Anne Boleyn for this poetry at all. This particular piece is quite relevant to what I say and what she has said. This was written by the way in 2015 and should raise alarm bells. I'd leave. If I was dating myself, I'd leave. I would hate the constant low self-esteem. I would hate the lack of romance because she hates herself naked, so why wouldn't anyone else? I'd hate the laziness, shower schedule, constant favours and no adventures. I would hate the pity parties because of her past broken hearts and shattered dreams. I'd hate her guard she puts up because of neglectful parents. I'd hate her frequent crying spells and major attitude. I'd hate her smell, her greasy hair, her broken out skin and nagging voice. I'd hate her two day old makeup, yoga pants and her taste in music. I'd hate how she appreciates so much, but never says it. I'd hate her need for confirmation 24 seven. I would hate the way she walks. I would hate her OCD tendencies that drive her mad. I would hate her mess. I would hate her eating disorder, her depression, and mood swings that hit me like a high speed truck. I'd hate her because she wouldn't believe that she was so much more than that. Yes, that piece really spoke to me. Now Amber likes to think of herself as a bit of a chef, which she really isn't. So let's have a little look at some of her renowned dishes. Let's start with this mukbang where she eats 15 taquitas and an Amy's broccoli mac and cheese. The serving FYI for taquitas is three. Just saying, that's, that's not how, that's not good. How's that diet holding out? Oh, that's right. It was only two days before this particular mukbang that you were doing a weigh in only to them put out a vlog the next day with you eating pasta and a massive pile of nachos. You're truly committed to this whole not dieting thing. You've got that part knuckled down at least. Let's quickly address another one of those mukbangs you did, which involved chicken and vegetables, only to the next day talk about weight loss. Now this is a trend within your content where you have done a mukbang and the next day done a video indicating your regret for the colossal mistake you made the day before. Oh, and as an interesting side, there is an actual channel that tries to recreate some of her masterpieces. Not many of them end well. Looks like we got another pal on there, guys. Wow, the more the merrier, am I right? Okay, let's try again. Oh. Oh no. I really taste the artichoke hearts. Okay. Guys, I can't swallow this. No. But yeah, I should probably go clean up my throw up and I'll tell you about the aftermath. Okay. Um... It's been a while, and 
I feel kind of sad. Like, really, I'm just kind of curled up in a ball, laying down, staring at the ceiling, just kind of... I don't know. Yeah, there's other things she should be worrying about besides little me. <laughs> but yeah, um, that wasn't meant to come across as mean. It's just like, you know, I'm irrelevant. <laughs> Anyways, um, thank you for watching. All t Just saying. Oh, and grandma's recipe is basically what poor people do in a pinch. Your grandmother taught you badly. And for someone that claimed to hate bacon, butter, and be allergic to egg, this meal is a mass contradiction. Now, before we get to the conclusion of this segment, let's talk about your lies. See, you're a prolific liar. So when you put out a video admitting it, and then claim it is a defense mechanism to protect yourself, it shows just how deluded you are. It makes it hard to believe anything you say, especially in your Q and A's. And also those videos where you claim to be using screenshots of an official email saying that you are fine. Oh, and as a final thing on your lies, for now, the binge eating disorder you claim you were diagnosed with when you were 16. Yeah, that wasn't a recognized condition until 2013. And stop saying you don't get heartburn, you say it in a video enough times. Now, to conclude this segment, there are two more things we need to talk about. Firstly, you unironically did this on Snapchat, not so long ago. The people that go on that show put in the time and effort to do the one thing you are utterly incapable of doing, which involves hard work and a mental strength you do not possess. This is either because of those around you enabling you, or you being too bloody minded to the point where you use them and break them to essentially serve you, all of which is supported by your own videos. Okay, hashtag not all. You are prone to deleting them from time to time. To add to that, when you claim to be making 10 grand a month and someone suggests you get the surgery, for you to then decline and then simultaneously mock those that get it for free after they've put in the effort to prove they are willing to lose the weight, which is something you would have to do in the first place anyway, is astonishing. I watch a lot of 600 pound life and sometimes these people will gain so much weight in a month. Like, I saw someone gain like 80 pounds in a month before, and I'm like, how? And second, you go about dieting all wrong. I personally think dieting is a fail from the offset. You should not regard it as a target to get down to, but a change in lifestyle. Adopting a mentality where everything is different and all requires work might be better suited to somebody so mentally weak. Being hungry is a side effect to being your size but tricking your mind with hunger busters or through mental exercises that occupy your head, or doing additional workouts can be of greater benefit to you. That said, when people say the majority of those that go on diets fail, yeah, they have you as a prime example of somebody who can't seem to get it right. Now that I've concluded this segment and I could have gone on for another 10 minutes, I promise you that. Let's move on to relationships because damn, you have quite the mess of a love life. There she blows. So for this segment, I could quite easily talk about your previous relationships. You know, those individual women you've dated, lived with, fallen out with, still lived with, abused essentially, used, to quite an extent. But instead, I want to talk about an ex. One in particular that you did something truly heinous. So much so, that you deleted the video after they made a video responding to your accusations. Luckily, luckily I have a copy of the video that you deleted. So let's have a little listen to some of your accusations. She was carrying her clothes, I'm pretty sure I remember, and I was like carrying mine. And then, I am I want to say this happened, it's been like six, seven years, so... Memories are kind of like fade in here and there, but I do remember us being on the sidewalk and I remember her dropping what was in her hands and she took me by the throat and she started yelling at me. I was like, what? And I think at the time, what shocked me the most was the fact that she was doing it in such a public place. Like there was nobody around that I remember. And like, I was like crying. Like she literally was, having me by the throat just like screaming at me she really thought i was attractive she really was sexually attracted to me and she always wanted to like have sex 
and I stopped feeling that for her. Like, I didn't tell her that. I would just, like, make up things like, oh, I don't feel good, or oh, I'm on my period, like, even though I wasn't. And just little things like that. And it made her fucking pissed. Um, when you say no to someone, whether you've been with them for, like, a month or whether you've been, been with them for, like, six years... If you say no to a sexual act, your partner should accept that. That is where I firmly stand. But she didn't. And she would literally sit there and beg me. At first it was like cute little begs. Like, oh, come on, baby. Whatever. But then as time gradually went on, it became, you're going to fucking touch me whether you like it or not. And I was like, you can't force me. And little did I know she can. Um, that's when she started punching me a lot. She would she would aim for my belly. Um, I don't think she ever actually hit me in the face. Her favorite spot was my stomach. She would punch me really hard in my stomach. She'd punch me like around right here a lot. She'd punch me on my arms. And she would continuously do it until I agreed to make love to her or have sex, whatever you want to consider it. Um... So not only was I being physically abused, but I was pretty much being like raped. That is what I consider it because I continuously would say no to her. So throughout the video, she makes a lot of very outlandish accusations and goes into tremendous detail about this, but she has since deleted it. That's because not long after, the fiance of the person you claimed beat you and raped you made a response video, and I'm now going to play a few clips from that, refuting your arguments. And to be clear, this, if anything, further cements the belief that you are a prolific liar. My fiancé told me that she's calling me an abuser and a rapist. That got my blood boiling. Now, the time we were dating, I was when we start da started dating, I should say. I was 15 years old. 15. Now the thing what she said with the laundry, that's a big false. Big false. Want to know how I know that? Because me and my mom would do her laundry. Me and my mom would go do laundry. She wasn't getting up to do laundry. She maybe did it a couple of times, a handful of times, probably counting on my one hand. She didn't do it all the time. At all. Now, the places she said about being hit, those were on me. Those were the exact places she hit me. I was the one being abused. And I will say this, I may, I may have laid a hand on her a few times. That was in self-defense. I didn't do it, and I damn well did not rape her. I did not rape her. Period. One time, when my mom and Dave were out, I don't know why we argued, but I was put on the bed. She wailed on me. Beat me real bad. I remember this clear as day. There was, our bed was in the living room. Next to the bed was a dresser. In front of the dresser was a table. Between the table and the bed was her over me, wailing on me. Did I fight back? Nope, not that time. Why? Because she kept calling me an abuser. So I just took it. I took it. Now before we finish on this segment, I want to make it quite clear. You, the audience, should decide whether or not Amber is guilty or the ex-partner. The information is there. The video she deleted is still available and the response video made to the deleted video is still public and on Casey's channel. I will of course link both in the description for you. But I will say, having spent enough time watching the accusations and the response, there is something almost sociopathic about how Amberlynn delivers her accusations. If any of these were true, you would go to the police. This isn't the BBC. You don't sweep it under the rug for many, many years and wait for an opportunity to absolutely shit on someone, which this seems to come across as. 
you drag someone who's living a happy normal life into your life which if anything just gave you more attention now i could much like the dieting talk for many 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 more minutes about your other relationships with destiny especially but i wanted to focus on this one because i believe this one and what you have done truly exemplifies just how underhanded how disgraceful and abusive you are in its truest form i this is really hard i'm not a liar the reason why we moved to kentucky i said it's because destiny wanted to be there for her mom i said we wanted to take care of her i think i might have said that in a vlog and i'm just getting in a abundance amount of questions about where I'm moving, people are guessing where I'm moving, what I'm doing with my life. People people are even spreading rumors that are just crazy about where I'm moving and what I'm doing. And I just, Destiny and I have not talked about it with you guys because there was a lot of things that we had to fix and figure out. And there was a lot of things that we want, we questioned whether we should tell YouTube certain things because this is pretty serious and I'm just going to let you guys know right now short form where we're moving what's happening and i'm not gonna go into like complete details because it's like destiny's not ready for that because this is mainly like her thing that i just brace yourself ever since destiny was a little girl she lived i mean she lived in kentucky for a little bit with her mom but it was not long just like a couple years and she's lived in florida her whole life with her dad and she missed out a lot with her mom and destiny when she turned 18 she was like um she had certain plans but in the back of her mind she's like oh what if i move to kentucky i want to experience something different i want to be with my mom and stuff like that and so it's something she thought about a lot i'm not a liar but it's not the truth we were just tired of Florida, honestly. I mean, mainly Destiny was, uh, how do I word this without like saying too much, but you know, get my drift. We, her mainly, she just felt kind of like it was time to move on from Florida. You know, some things were happening that she just wasn't happy about and she wanted a new beginning. I'm not a liar. So now, I want to move on to a slightly smaller topic, but a segment worth talking about nonetheless, and that is mental health. Before we finish up talking about those delightful animals you neglect. There she blows! For this segment, I thought I'd simply start by saying the one thing that she does not have, deadness. That's right, the only condition she doesn't have is deadness yet. Because over the course of five years, she has indicated what she does have, what she has googled then decided that she does not have or does have according to what google has told her because she won't go to a doctor and then there of course is the medication that she is on that she has switched over repeatedly because of her inability to adhere to a regimen it's a tad callous i know but to list all the things she does have and openly admits to having coupled with the fact that she lies google searches and claims to have it's actually quite difficult to tell what she does and does not have physically you can tell what she has and what she will inevitably get in the future. And with such a dark past, certainly one that she has mentioned on multiple occasions, couple that with the fact that she is quite prone to lying, it is quite difficult to tell whether or not she has had it as bad as she has said she has, and whether or not there is any truth to what she is doing. Bear in mind she did make a video quite clearly stating things that she lied about, all while saying, I don't lie. Now I know that may make this segment seem short, but I do want to touch upon a couple of things about delusions and lying to oneself because she does this a lot. Like, I'm literally reaching, like I don't know how else to show you, <laughs> like, awkward moment. And I'm having two, looks humongous on this tiny plate, two chicken egg rolls. Like I said, I am not vegan, I am just trying to make a better choices i know to some of you this is not healthy whatever <laughs> but she also as far as mental health goes manipulates others including ex-girlfriends and current girlfriend although her current girlfriend is as much of an enabler as she is simple and i don't mean to be rude when i say simple but when you're reading from grade three level books 
someone has to question the maturity and mentality of the person you're dating. Maybe that's a personal taste, I'm not going to judge that though. I am however going to question the kind of person that will openly mock their partner in a YouTube video or lie in front of them or make them feel small for views. The awkwardness in the video by the way that I'm referencing is astonishing. My skin actually cringed on its own. Oh, and to keep the lying theme going for a second, you used to have an Ask FM account. I did too, and I got terminated because I asked a question. You used to answer questions as well, although I'm inclined to believe some of them were lies. For example, what are some healthy habits you have? And you replied, exercising, drinking water, fruits and vegetables. One of those is a definite lie. Successfully managing two jumps with a skipping rope does not count as exercise. You were also asked, how many 300 to 400 pound people do you see in pictures from back in early days? None. People have progressively gotten larger over the past 100 years. Fast food is one of the main reasons people have grown so overweight. To which you replied, I don't even like fast food. I don't know how to respond to that. But you do lie to yourself a lot. And I think you convince yourself to lie so much to yourself to make yourself feel better, which is a terrible thing to do. Let's not forget here, you also at one point tried to rationalise your own weight, pointing out that if you didn't put in the effort, and wasn't trying as hard as she had been, you'd be well over 600 pounds. You don't make it very easy for me to find the best bits about you when so much of you is pure crazy. And this is going to be another little talking point. A lot of people, possibly some new people, hello, will come to this channel, see this video and watch, and be like, Omegon. Oh but she did this and this, and honestly, there's 800 pages of you on kiwi farms. Why didn't you cover the majority of that? And I have to reply with, because I have to pick the best points to make my point. And I'm going to save my point until after I've talked about your pets, because I think I'm quite keen on animal welfare. I'm not so keen on what you've done to your pets. But I'm sure, much like other issues you've had, including your relationships and your failed attempts at dieting. You have lied to yourself repeatedly to rationalize it, or made excuses or pretended to care, all of which is proven in the very videos that have been archived long after you deleted them. Now to finish up on this segment on your mental health, there are some conditions you do have that you openly discuss, and medication included along with, at one point, switching from one antidepressant to another within the space of a week. Now, I don't know what reason you gave because I can't find the video where you talked about it, but I can't see a reason why any doctor, even though you refuse to go see doctors, which is a lie, dentist perhaps, but only because you think you won't get cavities past the age of 17. That, by the way, is not a joke, but I can't believe a single doctor would reason that you would need to change antidepressant from one to another within a week, for some bogus reason of the former not working. As we all know, medication takes time to take effect. Not everyone is instantly happy with their happy pills, even though antidepressants are not happy pills. Hell, if it wasn't working, they could have put you on a beta blocker. Rhino dosage. In any case, one of the reasons I didn't want to touch too much on mental health is because I genuinely can't tell where you're telling the truth and where you're lying. Because your lies, and the fact you have told so many, makes it nigh on impossible for someone like me to work out after trawling through all oh, my life. For four days, by the way, constantly trawling through your videos and you now streams on the CXNT channel, go subscribe. I cannot tell when you're telling the truth or when you're not. And the fact that people have debunked you so easily in the past, including that ex-girlfriend that you accused of raping you makes it very hard for anyone to want to believe you. You are crying wolf, but time is against you now. Certain conditions you don't believe you have now are going to start coming up, and they're going to take over soon. Nobody has that yellower skin without it being jaundice related, and you can try and fob it off as a skin pigmentation from a Google search, but the only people that can actually diagnose you are doctors, not Google yet. I'm sure in the future they'll take GPs out of the equation. With this all said and done, I would like to now move on to the final segment, which is animals. More importantly, the cat you're allergic to, and that lovely little chihuahua, 
with those ridiculously curled nails that you still haven't clipped. There she blows! So over the years, Amberlynn Reed has had many, many pets, claiming to have well over 20 cats at one time. But the two I want to focus on are her Chihuahua, Twinkie, and an animal called Rarity. So let's start with Rarity, the lovely, adorable cat you had. You know, the cat you never looked after, and was supposed to have gotten spayed, but didn't. Yeah, those messages were leaked. This does not make you look good. To complement these messages, there is a short video from the CXNT channel. It's about 40 seconds long. I'm going to play it now because it is relevant to the subject of rarity and just how inept Amberlynn is. The messages you've already seen, yeah, this barely scratches the surface and we haven't even got to Twinkie yet. I know some of you are going to recognize that music from my outro, but honestly, it was a silent video. I had to play something there. It wasn't like I could go, <laughs> ignore Discord alerts, <laughs> for 40 odd seconds. I would leave my poor babies home alone without me. And what I mean by that is my dog and my cats were home without me for like 12 hours, sometimes even more than that. People actually abusing their dogs physically punching them and hurting them. I would never. This one was not an easy child. <laughs> Nobody. Oh, 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 don't stretch a kitten's arms out like that. That is quite poor taste. The smacking also is quite hard. Even if the dog was trying to nip at the kitten, that was far too hard. If you're struggling, by the way, might I recommend a dog training school? They do exist. Or Google it. I mean, you Google your own diagnoses. Surely you've Googled a suitable way to look after animals without having to resort to smacking them. I say this as somebody who's not only raised on a farm and surrounded by dogs, five by the way, but I don't have to smack a single one of them to make them understand that I'm the alpha and that what is right they will do, what is wrong they will be told off for, punished, deprived of treats. Very basic thing by the way. To get a dog not to do something like that, you can simply teach them by using treats as a way of making them understand they are rewarded for good things. A concept a dog can, in fact, grasp. Let's continue with this video, which was made by someone else, and I will again link it in the description. It's quite well done. That's that's what's important. They're in a healthy environment, a lovely place. That's what's important. White trash, get down on your knees. And again, they're just, they're love, they're showered with love. My dog is not abused in any way or form. Is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it.
Based on what you have all seen so far in this particular segment on animal care, you can certainly understand my position when I say that the evidence is not only damning but supported by the fact that you cannot seem to look after yourself, let alone animals, a hypothesis that has been proven throughout this entire video. Now to quickly address Twinkie, because there is a picture I put at the start of the video of a dog with some toenails that were curling in. If you took your dog for a walk along a regular pavement every day, your dog's nails would never need cutting, because they would wear on the concrete. But you haven't even done them yourself. You won't do them, which makes it very uncomfortable for your dog to walk. I know this. Hell, humans know this because we have similar conditions when our toenails curl at the edges. It is why we look after our feet, which I don't think you can reach. I know your razor can just about reach your legs, but I don't believe you actually shave your legs. I believe someone else does it for you. You've admitted to having someone shower you from time to time anyway, so it isn't hard to believe that somebody else does other things for you. Couple that with your incredible laziness. Although, I will say, to be as big as you, you would need to maintain a certain diet. Well, hmm, the word diet there has been perverted. You would have to be taking in 4,000 calories a day to maintain your frame, which is tremendous commitment. I know in your videos you like to show off sometimes when you're having your little diet moments for a day or two, eating less. So in fact, if you were able to maintain that, you would drop a couple pounds a week, easily, just from reducing your intake. For someone of my height and someone of my size, 2,000 calories is what I should be eating a day. I eat 1,200. Not because I can't afford more, but because I like to be the size I am, and because I don't need to eat more. You though have committed to eating more, which means and again proves that you are building your channel on a lie, and I think you get off from the self-destruction. But again, I've deviated from the topic of this segment because you are so infuriating. So let's play a little clip from a video with Twinkie in it. I hope this highlights my opinions on you well enough. Your dog doesn't love that swing, your dog looks submissive and broken, the nails are curled in because they haven't been trimmed, you're not looking after your dog, you're not feeding your dog rights, you're not caring for them or giving them the environment they deserve. You are a neglectful, horrible person, and you should have all your animals taken away from you by animal services, or at least be decent enough to give them to a loving home, and not the type of loving home you think you give them where you neglect them for days at a time. So in summary, because I obviously had a point, I wanted to showcase just how manipulative someone can be without trying to point out that I'm not overly fond of them as a person. I don't care for Amberlynn Reed as a person. I do care though when she's passing off bad messages, when she tries to play victim, when she tries to make excuses for her mistakes, when she will lie willingly without breaking so much as a sweat to do it. She'll sit idly in a car and break a sweat, doing nothing but telling you a lie, she will not. And she has been caught out by virtually every single person on the internet that I did not know existed until I started working on the relationship segment of this video. It is quite disheartening to know that there are so many different types of manipulative people out there. Somebody who is truly committed to only one type of diet and it isn't the one where her weight becomes less of an issue. There's no point at this stage denying that your weight is an issue as you yourself have said it multiple times. Couple that with the occasional trips to the shop that you are clearly forced to do to get out and be mobile, although I have seen the videos of your mobility scooters, so I'm not convinced you're walking around for anywhere near as much as you might lead everyone around you to believe. By around you in this instance, I mean your viewers, quite a large number of whom want you to succeed. They want you to do well, but you are deceiving them as well. And that's another disheartening thing about you. You're not committed. You start and break because you're fickle, and you'll fob it off down to the damage from your past. Whether any of that is true or not, though, I can't tell. And that's, that's what makes this so tragic, is that you have lied so many times that nothing you say anymore can be taken as anything other than bullshit. And I'm not a hater. I'm just some dickhead with a microphone that for two years has listened to a patron watch you self-destruct while they watch you so that they themselves do not end up like you. 
which they haven't. If this video is somewhat well received, and enough people ask for it, I might make a second video going into greater detail on the relationship aspect, because there is so much crazy there. The dieting, I know for a fact I barely scratched the surface, but I wanted to showcase it so you could understand just how terrible a person Anne Boleyn Reed is. And I'm not trying to incite hate, I'm stating fact using your videos as evidence for this. So that's all aside, I hope everyone has a lovely day, Thank you all for listening and also being patient because I had wanted to put this out yesterday, but this took far too long to script, research, and edit. I hope it was worth it. the fat people. Ooh, sandwiches. Mmm, gimme, gimme.